the Augsburg Black Student Union tonight would like to present to you the Minister of Culture of the Black Panther Party, Emery Douglas. Right on, power to the people. I'm very happy that uh, the Black Panther Party has been invited by various black student unions to come to uh, St. Paul, uh, to Minnesota, to, for four days of uh, revolutionary activity. For the four days, uh, there will be films, Black Panther Party films. We will also, for the first time, you will be able to see a new production in revolutionary art. You will be able to hear a revolutionary singing group called The Lumpin, which sings a lifestyle that everybody likes, rhythm and blues, but they will be putting revolutionary lyrics to these songs. And I'm quite sure that everyone here will be very impressed and very moved by this revolutionary entertainment that will pre precede uh, my little discussion, my little talk, uh, whatever you would like to call it. But I'd like to uh, perhaps maybe not just talk a whole lot, but after I get off into whatever I'm going to say, I don't have it written down, that maybe you can begin to raise your hands and ask questions and we have, uh, I think that that way we would have a more of a closer relationship. And I think we would get more out of it and have more of an understanding what the Black Panther Party is all about. But uh, first I would like to start off explaining that uh, it has been a historical fact ever since black people have been brought to this country that there have been resistance. There have been various levels of resistance. There are those who thought that they could resist nonviolently by turning the other cheek to the slave master. And with those who picked up guns and told the slave master, no more. No more will I sit around while you brutalize and murder and make a pile of corpse out of my people. Because to watch that and to do that is to be very cowardly. But I would rather participate in the struggle for the human rights of all people and that I will not hesitate to either kill or die for my freedom. And I think that this is what Nat Turner was all about. I think that this is what Denmark Vesey was all about. And I'm quite sure that uh, John Brown was all about that. But uh, it wasn't enough to solve the problem because none of them had organization. They had perhaps a following of people who would relate to them but they had no principles, nor did they have any ideology down. All they knew was that the slave master was killing them and they had to do something about it. And they did the best they could do at that time. And we say right on to that. Because we say that is the spirit, that is the spirit that we in the Black Panther Party shall continue in a revolutionary fashion. Now one must understand that uh, the Black Panther Party is a party built on self-defense. We do not go around in the white community attacking white people. We stay in the black community and try to implement programs that would be beneficial to black people. We have our breakfast programs. 
We have our free health clinics. We have our liberation schools. We have all of these programs which are based on cooperation among the people. And recognizing that when we implement these programs which are in direct conflict with the ideals of the United States government, which is based on capitalistic gains, that we have been attacked by the fascists, by the fascist U.S. government. And in those attacks, we say that we must defend ourselves by any means necessary, because that's what we intend to do, and that's what we've been doing. Because all across the country, all across America, Babylon, or whatever you want to call it, Richard Nixon has unleashed his, his vicious dogs against the Black Panther Party. He has given them the green light to kick down our doors without search, search warrants, to shoot us in our beds, to take us in the courts and shackle us and chain us and tell us that we don't have any rights because we're too outspoken, because we're exposing America for what it is, for being the number one enemy of all mankind. They don't like this. They attacked our office, our NCCF, which is not our office, but which is the organizing bureau of the Black Panther Party. They attack our NCCF in New Orleans. They tear gas, they burn the building. They did the same thing in Dayton, Ohio. They're doing it all across the country. And we say, why? We say, all we want is decent housing. We say, all we want is education that is relevant to us. We say all we want is all black men to be exempt from the military service. We say we want all black men to be freed from the many jails and prisons because they've had an unfair and impartial trial. Because of these things, we've been attacked. Because we ask for the human, the human rights that are supposed to have been ours by birth, like it was everybody else's, and we refuse that. We're sent to the penitentiary. We're given life sentences in jail because of those things. But we would rather, we would rather go to jail, or we would rather die than not struggle. We say to sit back and to not struggle against these wrongs that these pigs are putting down against the people would be reactionary suicide. Because you're going to die anyway, so you're best to do it in a revolutionary manner. And we say the Black Panther Party chooses revolutionary, revolutionary suicide rather than sit back and have a re reactionary suicide. We say that all the things that have happened in America, the incident in Marin where Jonathan Jackson, the brother of George Jackson, who was killed in the attempted to free some black prisoners from San Quentin, has brought the struggle to a new level. We say that that particular incident is not the uh, essence of what the revolution is all about. It's not the end. But we recognize it put a new perspective into the picture. It made us recognize that and see that so many people, like so many people, get hung up and then be think, begin to think that their struggle is just on one level. Like for instance, many of you think that your struggle is confined to the campus. But you forget that before you came to the campus, you was in the community. So your struggle is all back to the community. We say your struggle is against the total system. It's not against the, just the Board of Education. It's not just against a particular individual. 
because to think that your struggle is against a particular individual is to begin to be duped by the system. This is how they argue, and this is how they use trickery, to have us struggling against individual things while they're co-opting the whole. They have us struggling against the part while they're struggling against the whole. You see? They have us marching in the streets, protesting the war in Vietnam, when we know that the only way that war is going to stop in Vietnam is to open up another front, just like in Vietnam. You see? We know this. And that's without a doubt. Because you've protested, you've marched, and the war still goes on. The war is going on in your name. The war is going on in my name. The war is going on in everybody's name in America, whether they like it or not. And all those gangsters in the White House, when they do that, are playing tricks on the people. Because on the one hand, they tell you that they're going to stop the war and that the war is going to be between only the Asians, that they're going to pull out and that they're going to have a war between the North Vietnamese and the South Vietnamese. Well, that would be insanity because I bet you if the pigs, the fascists pull out, that the Vietnamese people would unite and they would tell these Yankees that you better not never set another foot on our turf because we got it together now and we're going to deal a death blow to you if you do. So we know that they ain't going to pull out of Vietnam. You see? All that is, all that is, is gangster's logic. You see? These war maniacs, these war maniacs who make profits on war, who love war, who don't intend to ever stop making wars. Because there was a time when they used to make wars for the purpose of dividing the countries and possibly getting the natural resources from those countries. But since the wedding between science and technology in this country, there's no need for them to go to the various countries for get the natural resources because they can produce all these, these uh, resources here through synth synthetic means, by synthetic means. So what they do is they create wars so that they can keep all these factories open that make tanks, that make bombs, that make airplanes, so that they can send them to the other countries and sell them to them for a price. And when they sell them to them for a price, they naturally, the country, use them in defense of what they think is right. And when they use them, these materials, these tanks, these airplanes are blown up, and then they have to come back to the United States to buy more tanks, to buy more airplanes, and to buy more guns. So we say that war is profitable to the United States, and it ain't going to stop unless we start another one right here. That's the only way we're going to have to deal with that, whether we recognize it and whether we relate to it or not. The Black Panther Party recognizes it because we have had over 28 of our members murdered in the last two years, and it's only been because of what we believe. It's only begun because of what the goals of the Black Panther Party are all about. And because of that, we've been murdered. I don't want to go off into too much anymore. I would prefer to have some questions, and maybe perhaps I could talk a little more. Because people seem to be just listening, but I want them to get involved. So maybe someone has a question that they'd like to ask. Yes. I find it kind of a comment or a, or a question. I said that when you ran parts, it was on the Chicago, on the Chicago trial, and it had one floor above the party, I remember, that the white community would get more up and rage if regular Panthers were more than they, than they would be about black, about black Panthers. I mean, 
that Aaron wants to have to go through, is what I'm trying to say. Well, uh, we don't understand that philosophy. I don't understand what you said. <laughs> but what I, before you start again, I see we just got another report. The brother just handed me this. The latest, uh, the latest uh, is that is that on a, a, a office, an office of ours in Car Carbondale, Illinois. Uh, four brothers were arrested. Uh, four pigs were wounded against 200, 200 pigs, and one panther is truly a match for 100. That's what it says. <laughs> this is the latest. So, so whether you see, whether, see what you have to understand, what you have to understand is that regardless of you sitting here in Minnesota and you think that everything is all right because this is not the red zone, but there's a, there's a war going on in America it's just decentralized. It just so happens that it happened uh, in Chicago now, one day, and then it happens in uh, New Orleans the next, then it happens perhaps in Ohio the next. But uh, people think that they're comfortable and that everything is going to be all right. But it's not going to be all right because uh, the, the matter of fact is it's going to be worse, whether you want to recognize that and like it or not. But that's the truth. Yes? Well, the position of women in the party is the same as men. We uh, don't uh, have no distinctions between men and women in the Black Panther Party because when the uh, pigs raid our office, they don't uh, just shoot men, they shoot at women too. And when they put them in jail, they don't put them on a sea lead mattress, they put them on springs just like they do us. They don't give them powder puffs, they give them the same kind of treatment we get. So we treat our women as our equals, as our other half. They're no different. We love them just as, just as much as we love ourselves, no more, no less. That still wasn't clear to me. You know, okay. Some of the women that were there objected to the Panthers being, the Panther men being there. Panther men being where? At a woman's workshop? Yeah, at the women's workshop. Okay, now, reports that came in from the other workshops that were going on around the city at that time said that there were, at some of the workshops, there were no Panthers there or no Panther men there for security. Okay, well, the only thing that I can, the only thing that I can, the way I can answer your question is in relationship to uh, how the Black Panther Party's position is. And the Black Panther Party's position is very clear: is that, like we, like I said, we don't make no distinction between the men and the women in the party in relationship to uh, where they be and what they, what they, an activity. You see, but uh, perhaps there were many people there who didn't have those principles. You see, to to guide them. And so uh, maybe there were a lot of people who weren't in the party didn't understand what that was all about, you see. That's, that's probably what it is, because you had uh, people, masses of people there who were from all across the country, you see, who, uh, who were at the convention, you see. Yes, brother. Could, could you talk a little louder, stand up, please? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, matter of fact, I think uh, the brothers, yeah, you still in jail. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure on that, but uh, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever it is, whatever it is, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it's nothing but gangster's logic to, uh, to keep the brother in jail for the rest of his life. I'm, I'm quite sure the only, the only thing I can see be charged with is being a freedom fighter. Anything else than that is, is uh, uh, wishy-washy. Pardon me? 
Well, see, what well, we're in the point of our struggle, brother, where we recognize that uh, we can't spend our time anymore fighting, struggling to get brothers out of jail in the court. If we see, you have to understand that when you go to jail now, you go to jail for the cause. You see, you're a, you're a revolutionary, and, you, and that's the part of being a revolutionary. If you're afraid to go to jail you might, uh, or die, you must withdraw from the revolution. It's just as clear as that, because that's what, it is, that's what it's all about. You see, we come to the point where we can't spend no more time just going to those courts, having mass rallies and demonstrations, you see. Because we have a brother now named Randy Williams who was in jail in, uh, uh, in uh, Oakland, California with a $75,000 bail. We, we, we get, he's in jail for three or four months on that bail. So we raised $75,000 to get the brother out. And when we raise the $75,000, then they tell him that we can't get him out of jail because he's a threat to the security of the United States of America. See, so he will probably he'll probably be there until uh, uh, he's gotten out by other means. Yeah. In the 1968, a few well, I don't think he's, he said it was cowardly. I, I think he might, perhaps he must have said it was incorrect because uh, you have to look at the whole situ situation. Now, people who call themselves revolutionary are talking about going underground so the pigs don't know who you are. Well, it, uh, if that had been the case of the Black Panther Party doing that when we, when we first were organized in the beginning, if we'd have went underground and then we would have tried and something would have happened and we'd have tried to go get some protection from someone, people wouldn't even know who we are. They wouldn't know how to judge us by our deeds because we haven't been out there to show them, you see. They come knocking to their door asking to hide us from the, hide, hide us from the pigs would be insanity because we haven't given them no reason. So we have to stay on top of ground until we're forced underground. You understand? In the beginning, to give you an example how you go underground, it's a gradual process. They drive you underground because in the beginning, the Black Panther Party used to carry guns on the streets of Oakland in open because it was, a, it was, part of, it was our constitutional right. You see, but when it became uh, feasible, non feasible to do that anymore, then we, was, we quit carrying guns on top of the ground. We began to carry the guns under the ground, or whatever you want to relate to it. You see, it's just a process that uh, in, time, in time you will be driven underground. You see, you'll be either driven underground or driven to the grave, or you will uh, just uh, uh, continue to fight for freedom, whatever it is. Yes. I can't hear you, brother. If you start, stand up. Well, many men can't maneuver into the Panther organization because the Panther, Black Panther Party is all black organization. We have, uh, we have white people who work in our NCCFs, National Committees to Combat Fascism, which is organizing uh, bureaus of the party, which are not people who are party members at all, you see. So uh, they couldn't infiltrate uh, the Black Panther Party. Perhaps they could infiltrate the police department or the CIA, the FBI, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, right now, no, brother. We are at, the, at this particular time. The party has been disbanded. It was first a party, then we uh, reduced it to an NCCF because of problems there, and then uh, the continuation, and then we just uh, disbanded that complete chapter. No, because it's, no, because Rory and Landon had been there for quite a while. So how could it have been to uh, the fact of Rory and, and Landon? Now, 
Well, if you, if you want to make it, if you want to make it very clear to you, we we also Lauren Watson, we also Lauren Watson because we don't allow anyone in the Black Panther Party to be accepting government money, and the man was working for the government. You see, so that's very clear. Now, it was just a matter of uh, it's a matter of education uh, to ex explain this and expose it to the masses. That it was, it's, it's stated very clear in our rules that no uh, Black Panther Party can receive any government money. Period. And the party was no, brother, because the party, the whole, the whole party, the whole branch was organized around uh, in that particular time when they got arrested. Yes. You, you run down what the plans are for the convention, especially as well as they have a general convention. Well, they're going to be, uh, they have workshops, various workshops. The Minister of Defense, the Supreme Commander of the Black Panther Party, Huey P. Newton, will get, be there to read the uh, new constitution. And uh, it will be at, uh, it's going to be held throughout the city. It, mostly all the major workshops will probably be held at uh, Howard University. And, uh, uh, we, all the preparations for those workshops are being made now. And not only that, but uh, see what happened. We had a very difficult time because, uh, because the very fact that we tried to get uh, what you call the armory in Washington, D.C., so that we could have the mass gathering there. But we found out the armory was controlled by Congress. So Congress and them had to meet to see whether the Black Panther Party was going to use the armory. <laughs> And uh, they came up with this decision, which was obvious. We knew it was going to come up. But the reason they gave it to us was because they couldn't let us use it because they're going to have to house their National Guard there because of all the political overtones that would be in the city at that particular time. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we'll see, uh, we, we, have, we, we, we practice in the Black Panther Party what you call democracy. And uh, we say that if a sister wants to uh, get an abortion, that's up to her. If a sister wants to have a baby, that's her decision, you see? Well it, would, well, it would be up to the decision of the particular sister if she asked that in the party. That would be her decision and that would be made a collective between her and the person involved directly, you see? Anything that is done on on basis of democracy in the, in the Black Panther Party, we're not not force anything on anyone. Yes. What is the uh, stand of the Black Panther Party on uh, on bombing particular? Uh, do they make any sort of distinction between revolutionary mass violence and uh, violence of, uh, that's individualistic? And what sort of contradiction? Well, uh, we say that uh, long, we say right on to all those who want to do whatever they're doing in the name of the revolution. Yeah. See, because we recognize at this stage of uh, the struggle that uh, uh, is, is not dependent upon uh, just one particular uh, organization, you know, and one particular uh, direction, but they, uh, the, uh, the, the making of the revolution takes many aspects and many dimensions. You see, so uh, uh, we we don't we don't criticize. We rather criticize. Uh, uh, we would rather criticize uh, a, a, a dead pig than a wounded pig. You know. You see. Yes. Yes. Well, uh, we have, uh, matter of fact, we have Kenny Horton, who is with the, uh, uh, work, is working with uh, unions in uh, the Bay Area. Uh, and we have a black caucus, Black Panther Party caucus, and the unions out there. So we have, uh, have some workers working within the, uh, the factories. Well, we recognize that uh, in, here in America that uh, many of the workers at this particular time are, is, is uh, unfortunate, uh, just uh, 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 hard hats, you know. Uh, they are, are Democrats and Republicans, you see. And that, uh, that we say that the most advanced elements is uh, the, uh, the lumpen proletariat, 
those who uh, hate, hate the slave master, those who hate the boss, who would rather kill the boss than to work for the boss, you see? We talk, this is what we're talking about. In, uh, that's the most advanced element. Brothers and sisters who are down in the curve, reach, reaching up for the curve, you know? Are down in the gutter, reaching up for the curve. Those who were supposed to not be organizable. Yes. Yes, because we're fighting against the United States government, which is the major cr criminal of the whole world. <laughs> See, people, a lot of times, they'll try to get us trick us and get us hung up in the individual, but we know that it's not the part, it's the whole. They try to tell us that it's the mafia, but we say it's the United States government. They try to tell us that the Irish, but we say it's the United States government. They try to tell us that the Jew, we say it's the United States government, because all those ethnic groups make up the government. So it's very clear to us that it's the United States government that we're opposing. Yes. No, because all of the same people that run the government are the ones who run the banks. I have to control the bank. I mean, it's the corporation. Uh, the only difference I see is that President Nixon is the president and he's a, a board, he's a chairman of the board of General Motors. That's the only difference. I mean, I'm, see, you have to understand is that both of them are is interrelated because uh, uh, they have to go to General Motors to uh, get many of the, uh, the uh, military equipment which is produced in this country. And so they have to have uh, contracts. There are contracts between the government and General Motors to produce war machines, to go and kill other people. Not only other people in other foreign lands, but to also to kill uh, people right here in America. Yes. Well, uh, we don't, we don't, uh, uh, we didn't speak out against Ron Dellums and because we don't get involved in electoral politics because we recognize that electoral politics is not going to solve our problems because we say that our problems start with a hungry stomach and dilapidated housing, you see. Our, our, our problems don't start up in Congress, but it starts right there in the black community. So we say that's where our politics started, not up there. You see, because we recognize that uh, one individual is not going to solve our problem, or two black individuals are not going to solve our problem, because we have three or four black mayors, and we have a couple of black congressmen, you see. But uh, we're still being brutalized on the one hand, murdered, and uh, railroaded off to jails. You see, our problem is still, still the same. We don't control, even though we have black mayors, we don't control the water that comes into our community. We don't have any control over the electricity that comes into our community. We can't even, we don't even have control over the trucks or the drivers or the workers who come in to fix the electricity in our community. So we still are powerless people, if you want to look at it in that sense. We say that uh, only the color changes, but the illusion is still the same. Yes. Well, uh, our position is that uh, we have a, a differences. Our differences, they are, they are cultural nationalists, and we, and we are internationalists. We're revolutionaries. That's the difference. That's uh, all that I can tell you about our, in, 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 in our uh, uh, differences between us and uh, uh, Leroy, Leroy Jones. And that uh, we say that uh, we understand what Pan-Africanism is all about. But Pan-Africanism don't mean that, uh, which the way that uh, uh, Stokely Carmichael is expounding, it means that you embrace everybody and you love everybody because they're black. Because they got black people that'll kill you just as quick as white people. You see? And uh, that's, that's very clear. And we have profound examples of that. You see, we've had four or five brothers who've been killed by the US organization in Los Angeles, California, and San Diego.
You see, you have to understand that uh, we just don't embrace people uh, because of the color of their skin. We embrace them by their deeds. Yes. I can't hear you. Uh, no, we we uh, we uh, we we recognize yes that they are nothing but token heads. They are uh, slaves to the system, but uh, we want, we're not going to waste our energy uh, 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 trying to uh, to uh, talk about them. Why should why should we prop them up when we know what they're all about anyway? Why should we give give them uh, put them in the limelight by talking about them? You know. Even though we're going to talk about them, we'll expose them to the people, yes, for what they are, but we're not going to waste any time and energy uh, outside of that. If that's what you're talking about, is that right? Yeah. Well, our, our position is like in our rule. We say that no party member can, uh, should, should, no party member can use any kind of drugs at any time, or he would be expelled from the Black Panther Party. And we have, uh, now we recognize also that uh, they may have, may have many problems about drugs, uh, many uh, methadones and all these other programs, you see. But we know that uh, right now the only thing that's going to be relevant is uh, some uh, uh, educational type of programs. And we have the only thing, the best thing we have to give right now is a, a pamphlet by Michael Tabor Setuea called Capitalism Plus Dope Equals Genocide. Because Michael Tabor was a, a, a dope addict for approximately around 10 years himself, and he knows what that's all about. Is that a Pardon me? No, no. Uh, Michael Tabor is right here. He's in New York City. He's on trial. He's one of New York 21. Uh, I don't know. I haven't been over there. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, well, uh, he's, old, he's in Algiers at our, at our embassy. He was given a, uh, uh, he was given a, 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 he was granted to stay out. He was, he was, in other words, he was, he's staying at our embassy in Algiers. He's going to uh, do some uh, political work in, in relationship to the Black Panther Party. Uh, over there in Algiers. Pardon me? Was, well, well, what you have to understand is that uh, he's not a member of the Black Panther Party and that he's given his work and if he want to do that, that's fine. We said that no member of the Black Panther Party, you understand, can use drugs. But we can't, we can't, we can only educate uh, educate the people about drugs, but we can't go out there uh, with an uh, iron fist and, and brutalize and, uh, 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 people because they use drugs. It's a long process, a long educational process before uh, people begin to understand what heroin is all about and other hard drugs, perhaps. Yes. Right. Yeah, well, see, we uh, have a, uh, we used to, we uh, uh, work along with all ethnic, all ethnic group, ethnic, different ethnic groups. And uh, matter of fact, uh, we, our paper, uh, for a while, we were putting it out with La Siete de la Raza, who was uh, relating to the Latino brothers in, in San Francisco who were just uh, uh, found uh, not guilty of uh, murdering a, fat, a pig, you see. So uh, uh, we work along with, uh, with the, we, matter of fact, we have done some work with the Young Lords uh, in different organizations. Yes? Uh, 
No, yeah, uh, only only the difference is the uh, the difference is the uh, 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 I could say is the amount. The difference is that they use racism against perhaps the Mexican American worker and more so against the black worker, whereas they don't use that against the white worker. <laughs> you understand? It's a degree of uh, it's just a degree of uh, exploitation. You see. And there's more. And the difference. The difference is, is that there's more. There's more. There's more. Uh, there's more outright murders of black people in this country than in any other ethnic group by the by the system. You see. There's there's more unemployment of black people. You see. There's more black people who are starving. There's more black babies dying than any other ethnic group in this country. You see, and we consider we consider see when we talk the Black Panther Party talk about workers, we consider uh, the the, uh, the pimps, the whore, the prostitutes, the hustlers. We consider them all as workers because those are jobs. You see, it's, it's surviving and even though it's reactionary and it's uh, it's uh, as we we don't endorse that. We consider it as a job of them trying to survive in in, in America. Yes. Well, it just started. Matter of fact, uh, uh, matter of fact, it's on uh, uh, the 17th, next November 17th, about three days from now. Yes. Pardon me. Well, we're both struggling for equality. Well, well, they, uh, they, they believe in the Honorable Elijah Mohammed, and we believe in the uh, Honorable Huey P. Newton. <laughs> yes. Pardon me. Well, we give we give support to all people who uh, uh, out who uh, uh, are struggling. I say for for the freedom of, of all 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 the people, and uh, we will uh, give the same support to her that we will give to any other political prisoner. Yes, and right in front, yeah. I can't hear you. Got to talk louder. Are equal? No, because no, because no, because uh, with black people, uh, racism comes into play. Racism plus capitalism. You see, whereas the white workers are only exploited. You see, economically, but black people are exploited economically, and we're we're murdered. Uh, and, and brutalized because of the color of our skin. Yeah. Do you feel that racism versus white workers as well? Pardon me? Yeah, we say that racism is a degenerate thing and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it hurts anybody. That's very true, yes. It's, uh, that's, that's the, that's, that, as a matter of fact, it's, gonna, it's hurting America so much until America is going to be changed because people ain't going to relate to it no more. Yes. Um, what sort of ideas do you think people who are trying to do revolutionary art themselves? Also, what do you think of Cuban art? What I think of Cuban art? Okay, the first thing uh, you have to do and understand is that to be a revolutionary artist, you have to uh, relate to the masses of the people. You have to uh, relate to uh, their everyday lives and uh, uh, their, their suffering. You have to understand their suffering. 
And when you understand that suffering, then you have to begin to project that in pictures. But you have to project it in a way that you sow the suffering, but you also give a solution to their problem. So we never, we never draw pictures that don't have guns in it, because if we didn't have guns, we wouldn't show them how to solve the problem. We recognize that uh, everything we do is based around the politics of our party, and our politics reflect the armed struggle. So therefore, our culture and our art is going to reflect our politics, armed struggle, you see, a means to an end. You see? So that's, that's what that's all about. And I say that, uh, like the Cuban art, I, I think it's, it's good art. I feel like uh, uh, the, the main thing that I like about the Cuban people's art is that it has very bright and beautiful colors. And I've attempted to uh, apply that, that to my art. Uh, and I also tried, attempted to apply from the Vietnamese, the lifestyle of the masses, you see? Always showing the people fighting, being victorious. You have to have that type of attitude so you can change the psychological makeup of the masses here in America who always had the defeatist attitude because they've been scared of the, the pig service of Bob and Billy Club. But the only way you change that is the same psychological way that they have put it upon you that you're supposed to fear through, the, through, through uh, bombarding the masses with co uh, correct information. Yes? Well, we say that uh, uh, no black man should be forced to go and fight in the military, you see. Well, people like them are being uh, oppressed by the same government for the same reason. So uh, we don't have any problems with the United States government wanting to draft Black Panthers. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> No, we don't register for the draft. They send us draft, they send the Panthers draft notes, we just throw it away. And they don't even come bother us about it. <laughs> yes. Pardon me? Well, uh, I can, uh, it's, it's too, too difficult dealing with this situation right now. I mean, uh, we have to, see, what we have to understand is that uh, the, the whole, the future is going to be taken care of because there are people here, there are, there are people, there are people with the knowledge of science and technology who will use it for the, the masses, you see, but there are those who are revolutionaries who have to make the revolution and that's what they have to concentrate on and nothing else because that's what they put here for, you see. And uh, I'd like to say one other thing, that the possibility that uh, this, coming, this coming Saturday, depending upon the outcome of uh, what happens between now and Friday and how things come about, that uh, the Minister of Defense, uh, uh, the Supreme Commander of the Black Panther Party, Huey P. Newton, will possibly be here this coming Saturday. It will be known this coming Friday for sure. So uh, you can look forward to an uh, announcement on that one way or the other this coming Friday. He would probably be speaking possibly at uh, one of the colleges, Carleton College or McAllister College, more like the Carleton College. Yeah. Yeah, what I wanted to ask about is what you were talking about earlier. You were talking about declaring the war on, um, you know, focusing on the second front. Mm -hmm. And what I want to ask about is the kind of distinction the uh, path you make between the, the kinds of activities that the white people at any rate can get into with this. Like, I know we've had a lot of white people running around talking about this, like, by declaring war right now, somehow they can bring the capital system down, you know, being where whites are at, without really advanced the movement yet. Uh, and on the other hand, the people who are trying to organize the, the kind of a mass base that we really, you know, we can talk about class warfare in a serious way, where the, you know, who went to the class is moving. And what I want to ask is the kind of distinction that the party makes well, right now, uh, uh, we say right now the only distinction we can say is that uh, in, in the black in the black in the colony that uh, black people will have to deal with their struggle the way that they feel best that's going to get them liberation, and that white people will have to go by revolution in the mother country the way that they feel best that will uh, create revolution. You see, and then uh, uh, in the final analysis, I'm quite sure we will both have uh, 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 united blocks where we will both uh, come merge together to create what we call uh, the, uh, the American Revolution. You see, number three. And 
Her number two. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, in, in response to my last question, uh, you, uh, you analyzed the black situations that you emphasize the love mm -hmm. for the working class black. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that's a, a correct analysis for whites, that uh, whites should perhaps rather than work with the working class, should work with young uh, yeah, well, see, that's what it is because uh, there's a, there's the, the lumping proletariat of the uh, black, and there's a lumping proletariat of the white community, as well as the uh, the Chinese community and the Mexican American community. I mean, you you, you see that when you see uh, all the the young white people who refuse the draft, all the young white people who uh, uh, refuse to relate to the system in any any manner. These are called a lumping proletariat of the, of the white community. And I think that those are the most advanced elements because those are the ones that see the contradictions in the working class, you see, in the white community. Yes? Yeah, for me, the lumping proletariat, you see the contradictions that raise their hands to serve the working class in the world. But do you really think that they can move anywhere and pull anyone along until they can uh, support their own with money? Yes, I'm quite sure it can because the Black Panther Party considers itself a lumping proletarius and uh, we're self supporting. Well, perhaps that will happen eventually, but it just ain't working out that way right now. No, but what she grants is, how do you get there if, 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 if Well, see, we understand that, well, see, what we understand, we understand that uh, there are some, there are lumpings, some of them who work, you understand, and they work in factories. You see, that's, that has to be made very clear. Well, all right, they might be infiltrators, and all right, or whatever you want to say, but they work there. Yes. Well, uh, first time I heard of the Red Panthers, I know I've heard of what they call the White Panther Party, and what you call it in uh, Ann Arbor, and um, uh, uh, only thing we can say is that right on, if they want to call themselves the White Panthers, right on, you know. But we never heard of no such animal before. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, is that what they want to call itself right on? If the politics is right, that's all right, you know? Yeah. Huh? I still I couldn't he could understand you too well. Also, they just confirmed that uh, Huey P. Newton, the Minister of Defense of the Black Panther Party, will speak at McAllister College this Saturday at 7:30 p.m. Huh? No, brother.
Yeah, I, I couldn't answer that for you because I still don't understand it. I probably have to talk to you later about that because I can't, I can't get a clear understanding. Of it. Any more questions from the from the back? And then you read this and Can't hear you. That's going to make a difference in our lifetime. Is our resistance like we're resisting right now? Every time the fascist pigs attempt to kick down our doors in the in the black community, that's the type of front we're trying to we're setting up. Because by doing that, we're setting examples to, to the masses of people to how they what they have to do if the uh, if the uh, disturbers of the peace come trying to kick their door down that they have to uh, uh, have to. Uh, Defend the, def defend the threshold of their home, which starts at the door, you see? And uh, this is carried on. Yes? Um, just a very short question. Does the Panther um, Party, uh, or, or does the Panther Party hope to uh, you know, achieve the same type of position as the Communist Party does in other parts of the world? No, we say that we uh, we don't uh, have uh, any uh, blueprint f for the revolution. We say that uh, uh, where our present goals are is to implement programs that would be uh, beneficial to the black community at this particular time, and uh, that's what we're working on now. Mm -hmm. All right. I was wondering if, uh, before we go any further, I wonder if the uh, if the uh, brothers were about ready to come on. If anybody know if the if the lumping, because this is all a part of one one uh, one one uh, part of a revolutionary program that you would be dealing with this evening. Yes. No, but what you don't what you don't understand is that uh uh recognize that uh we recognize that this society is still a racist society. And so that uh to uh we have to uh do a massive educational program in the black community so that uh black people will understand that uh we don't fight racism with racism, that we fight racism with solidarity, you see. And so we say that white people have to do the same thing in the white community. They have to go in the white community and organize white people who are who uh who are the ones who pr pr uh, perpetuate racism in the first place, you see. And we say, uh, and while doing that, we're working on the same, we're working, in the, we're working in the black community to create that united front, and you're working in the white community to create the united front. The Chinese are working in the Chinese community, the Mexican-Americans in the Mexican-American community. And at the same time, we'll continue to thrust forward to that, that, to that, that, uh, to that point of, uh, of connection. Well, we see. We say. We see. What you have to understand is that uh, our bosses don't st start in no office. The boss starts down there with the service revolver in the billy club, beating and beating our heads and crushing our skulls every night and every day. You see, we, our, our, our bosses start with those uh, avaricious landlords. You see, who uh, don't care if little babies get bit by rats. You see, as big as cats and dogs. You see. 
So you have to understand the difference between the bosses that you are, are, are fighting against and the bosses that are, are black people are fighting against, you see? Well, perhaps the same bosses, but different circumstances, different conditions, different situations. Yeah. Pardon me? No, what we say is that uh, we see we have to understand that we're not we recognize that every every one every man, woman, and child on the planet Earth is not going to uh, be a part of the Black Panther Party. But we we try to put down ideals that the uh, that uh, that would uh, be a guide to action. You see, we try to implement programs and uh, give solution to problems so that the masses will be able to deal with them themselves. You understand? We just try to uh, project the means to an ideal so that maybe hopefully the masses will be creative enough to uh, deal with the situation themselves, those who don't want to directly participate in the Black Panther Party. Have you spent any time in jail? Yeah. About a year and a half. I've been uh, in and out, you know, since I've been in the party. Pardon me? Uh, we we base them uh we base exploitation on on the, on uh, uh we we base people on on what they do, you understand? By the manner in which they act. <laughs> well, we quite I'm quite sure you, you understand what I'm talking about. I mean, uh, uh, a judge is a judge. You understand? Uh, uh, avaricious businessman is avaricious businessman. You see? If you got to make money, you see, and a lying politician is a lying politician. Oh. Yes. Pardon me? No, we're fighting the capitalistic system. But, that, but you have to understand at that time that takes into uh, you fighting the whole, the part in the whole at the same time. Because you have to fight the system, but at the same time you have to give examples to the masses to show them that, uh, the manner that a capitalist acts. You have to show them what, what you have to do to uh, deal with the capitalists in, in the fashion that they act to, uh, get, to rid uh, the earth of such, uh, of, of, uh, of, uh, such uh, trash. The brother about ready? Is the number about ready? I'd like to know how you view the students who take their role and their position in relationship to the rest of society and also the value of organization. Well, we see what you have to understand is many people always separate the students from the society. First, before you even became a student, you were in a you were you were a part of a community. You see, you were you came from a community before you came to the campus. So we say that anything that you do on the campus, you should take back to the community. You see, and that's the role that uh, of uh, the students can play. You see, and you have many uh, creative uh, of of uh, ideals that could be very usable to the to the community as a whole. Yes. Uh, could you explain how uh, the Black Panther Party and you arrived at smoking uh, killed the fascist pigs? Uh... You mean death to the fascist pigs? Well, uh, we say that that was a slogan that uh, we have to understand that Agnew and Richard Nixon and all those other pigs is other than Congress and the Senate and the White House and in the Pentagon. They say all power to the people, you see? So uh, we say that, they, that we've been culturally infiltrated again. 
So we must move further to the left. So let them say death to the fascist pigs, you see? See, we have to begin to move to a means where we can't be culturally infiltrated anymore. See, then you begin to be on the road to truly creating a revolution because they cannot put death to the fascist pigs up on no billboard, you see? They can't go up to the rally and after they get through feet and say all power to the people, death to the fascist pigs, you see? That would be self-murder, you see? It's uncompromising, that's what it is. Yeah. Oh well, uh, we we it was it was very clear that uh, Alex Rackley was murdered. He was murdered by a police informant, George Sams. It was made very clear. People who wanted people who knew George Sams for what he was uh, were, were refused. Were, the judges would not let him testify. Uh, George Sand had been in a mental institution uh, for about two or three years, and uh, uh, when Charles Aguirre asked for him to have uh, be uh, psychological treatment to see if the man was insane, uh, they brought back that he was insane. Uh, he was uh, when he was picked up before he even went to went to he didn't even have to appear in court, and they gave him uh, what you would say uh, 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 second degree murder, which is only he could only do about two or three. Two or, th two or three, four or five years, perhaps he might not even do that. And uh, we recognize that this is nothing but a conspiracy against the leadership of the Black Panther Party because uh, uh, sister, uh, one of the sisters, uh, Francis, Francis Carter's sister, Peggy Hug Huggins, has been released. Uh, Rose Smith was released. They had him plead to some old phony charge so that they could fake a buzz suspicion on the people and make them believe that they had did something, but they were released, they're out of, out of jail. Uh, everybody else is out of jail except for uh, Erica Huggins, who was the uh, acting deputy minister of, uh, of defense of, uh, of Connecticut, and our chairman, who, Chairman Bobby Seale, and Lonnie McLucas, who also was uh, very influential in organizing the chapter in Connecticut. And they're still holding uh, Landon, Landon Williams and Rory Heights, who were very, uh, very instrumental in organizing in the New York area of the part. Matter of fact, organizing the whole East Coast, uh, holding them as captives, uh, political prisoners in uh, Denver, Colorado. You see, so uh, we find that, that all it is is a conspiracy to, uh, to try to uh, stifle the leadership of the revolution. But we say the invincible thoughts of the Black Panther Party can never be destroyed because they're manifested in the minds of the people. You see? Yes. Who, who, who's? <laughs> Uh, well, we get support from all the uh, liberation uh, movements in Africa. We have, uh, we have uh, our comrades in North Korea. Korea. We get, matter of fact, we get support from all the people who are struggling against U.S. imperialism. We've, we've, uh, had, we've had invitations. We've traveled to... Uh, uh, North Korea, to North Vietnam, to Peking, China, to, to Cuba, to the Middle East. We've been to, uh, we've had representatives have been to all of these places. And we're invited by the uh, governments and the, uh, the revolutionaries in those areas. Uh, maybe one or two more questions, and then uh, I'd like to, uh, we'd like to get off into the, uh, bring on the Freedom Messengers, who will start off the program with two tunes, and then you will be able to hear uh, the most devastating uh, thing that has come out of the struggle at this time, the Lumpen, who will be singing revolutionary songs for you. And uh, uh, I'm quite sure that you would be more than thrilled at what you hear. I guarantee you that uh, the songs that you hear will be uncompromising and that I guarantee you that they won't be
won't be able to pay them on the radio because they would be like uh, committing suicide for the fascists, just like I said before. So I think you should stay and listen to it, and you, very, you will appreciate what you hear. Uh, any more questions? Okay, one more. Uh, yeah, I just, I just wanted to uh, ask about uh, what you think about Stokely Carmichael. Uh, I thought that uh, when you mentioned the uh, Barbies, when you mentioned the Jews in the bio, in the stand, I, 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 I remember you asked that. Yes, well, what we say is at the time that uh, what happened was at the time that uh, that trial was, uh, was going on, Elder Creeper wrote an article asking the reason why didn't Stokely Carmichael come and speak out uh, because he was the one who knew George Sam and brought George Sam to the, the party. And if he, uh, why didn't he come out and speak in the defense, in the defense of the uh, chairman of the Black Panther Party whose life was on the line for, uh, for, uh, for murder? That, uh, 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 that he could have never had possibly anything to do with, you see? And see, it's been very clear, what you have to understand, it's been very clear that it's been a known fact that our chairman, Bobby Hill, was invited to, to uh, New Haven, Connecticut by someone who was on the board of trustees who was a member, who was uh, also a known CIA agent, you see? All this information is, has, been, has, been, has been coming out slowly but surely, you see. So uh, we find that it was, it, it was, it was a, we, know, we recognize it was a conspiracy on the part of the government because uh, at, at, prior to that, the New York 21 had been just busted. And, what, and you have to recognize that, uh, uh, what's his name, I think it was it's, uh, Rockefeller who was on the board of trustees of uh, Yale University. You see, where uh, Chairman Bobby Seale was invited to speak. So we hook all that up, and we, we see what it is, see what it is. And nothing but political blackmail against revolutionaries. So right now, uh, I'd like to introduce to you uh, a revolutionary band that we're backing up the lumpings of the Black Panther Party, calling themselves the Freedom Messengers.